Hey there, creepy peeps, and welcome to day 11 of 31 Days of Horrorween. Today, I'm gonna be reviewing The Deaths of Ian Stone, which was recommended to me, or suggested to me um, by B, who is also one of my creepy patron peeps. So thank you for your request, B, and thank you to all my other creepy patron peeps for your support of my channel. If you wanna find out the perks to being a patron, you can follow that link in the description. Directed by Dario Plana, The Deaths of Ian Stone follows Ian, who is murdered each day by horrifying monsters only to wake up the next day in a different life. Ian soon learns that there's a reason for his multiple lives and deaths, leading him to kill his murderers and ending the cycle once and for all. All right, so there is very, very little information about this movie out on the interwebs, um, but it does look like it was part of the After Dark Eight Films to Die For list when this came out in 2007. I liked the concept for this movie a lot. Um, <laughs> it definitely, you know, was very like, you know, pre Happy Death Day, post Groundhog Day sort of feel to it, but with a twist the twist being that he ends up in a different life each time he dies as opposed to reliving the same day over and over. Got that small distinction um, made for an interesting conflict because it's like, you know, obviously it's, I feel like it's kind of easier for a character to figure out they're living the same day over and over again, but for Ian, he's like in a completely different life. But that starts to unravel when he realizes he has memories of one of his previous lives and then you know the proof in the current life that he's in shows that that's not true so like when things start to not add up that's when he realizes it and i thought that was an interesting conflict in the movie and um i'm gonna spoil stuff in the movie here so just before worrying for the rest of the review um i there was the whole thing about him being like a um whatever they're called harvesters i think that's what they call them in the movie um so he is like one of the supernatural beings that is hunting and killing him in each life. I wiped his memory and so it like has to do with him remembering who he is and that sort of thing. And for me that kind of had like a Matrixy vibe to it for whatever reason. Um, I liked that. And I also thought the plot unfolded nicely. I thought the pacing was really well done. So instead of finding out everything at the very beginning of the movie or all in a rush at the end, like Ian finds out things, you know, sporadically throughout the movie so it's like more of like an unfolding rather than okay so you've watched the whole movie now here's all the answers <laughs> it's like he figures out that he's having these like multiple lives or whatever and then he finds out who's hunting him these harvesters and then he finds out that he is one of them and you know like it unfolds that way so I thought the pacing was really well done and it made for an entertaining movie because, you know, it kept me wanting to know more of what was going on. I also thought the effects were pretty good, like there is a lot of CGI and then I feel like it was mixed in with some practical effects or, you know, like the CGI kind of enhanced it, um, which was good. I do, I do like that. Um, <laughs> personally, I feel like that's where CGI is at its best, like, you know, because sometimes it just enhances what you got going on practically, which I like. It wasn't great, but it wasn't the worst. Like given how old the movie is now, at least technology wise, um, I feel like it still looks pretty good. And I also thought the performances were uh, pretty good. The movie stars Mike Vogel, which this is the first movie of this nature that I've seen him in. And I was pretty impressed because I've usually only seen him in kind of like comedy-esque kind of movies. Um, the main one that I <laughs> mostly remember him from is Grind. I used to watch that movie all the fucking time. Being said though I did think the dialogue was a bit wordy at times um, for example when Medea is torturing Ian in the whole like hospital sequence um, she has like one of those classic villain monologues where she's over explaining everything and it just drags like that whole hospital sequence when he is like stuck in the bed and he's being tortured and everything goes on for so fucking long seriously like i oh gosh when he finally like remembers who he is and he like comes into his powers again i was i was so happy i was just so happy to see it like move away from that like it just dragged on too long and i think it was due in part to we had to listen to medea pretty much explain everything you know <laughs> explain stuff some things that we already knew explain some new things um explain why she was doing this all this stuff and it was ugh, ugh. 
boring. Like I said, I thought the concept was cool, but I feel like sometimes it relied on the characters explaining it too much. So we have another character, Gray, who is actually trying to help Ian, but he's also responsible for kind of explaining what's going on in a rush. Throws Ian the bone in the beginning, like these people are hunting you. Like he doesn't say who it is, but he's like, they're hunting you and they're creating these lies for you and they're gonna keep killing you, this sort of thing. And it's just like, okay, like just over explaining too much. And then Medea just reiterates all this stuff at the end, which makes that seem super boring, like I mentioned. So it was just, there were a lot of instances of telling rather than showing, um, which gets boring. It reminds me of back in my early days of YouTube where I used to get comments sometimes, which I, I took to heart and I think they were really good advice where people were finding my videos kind of boring because I'm just sat in front of the camera talking for like 12, 13, 14 minutes with no real visuals, like no pictures, no videos overlaying my face. I understand that and I feel like that was happening in movie form here. That being said though, is the deaths of Ian Stone worth watching? Um, I feel like the theme of this week um, is I would like to see this movie redone um, and because I would like to see this movie redone. It would actually be really good as a TV show. Like honestly, I would watch that and I think you could get a whole lot more about like the harvesters and that sort of thing, like which I thought was really cool, um, but I just didn't get enough of in the movie. Um, so I feel like this would work really well as a TV show, actually. And I don't say that often because I find the, everything being adapted into a TV show nowadays kind of annoying, but this one would work. Um, they should do stuff like this. You know, I'm gonna give it a three out of five though. I thought it was all right. On IMDb, it has a 5.6 out of 10. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a 75, 57% critic score and a 34% audience score. And on Letterboxd, it has a 2.6 out of five. Surprise, surprise. I watched The Deaths of Ian Stone on Amazon. So I'll leave an affiliate link for that in the description if you wanna check it out that way. There's no pressure to use that link, but if you do, it does help out the channel. There's also affiliate links to rent all of the movies that I've watched thus far for 31 Days of Horrorween over on my blog. There's a whole page dedicated to it, um, and those are all affiliate links, just so you know. Um, I do hope you enjoyed this video though. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new here and become a creepy peep today. I post videos Monday through Friday and uh, Normally, sorry, um, I post videos Monday through Friday normally and every single day of October I'm posting a movie review. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, stay strange. Bye.